Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see the exciting second-year quarterback, Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens, as they square off with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. With that, let's get up to Seattle. Standing by at CenturyLink Field, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Well, no trip to the Northwest would be complete without a little rain, and we've got a lot of rain falling right now at CenturyLink Field in downtown Seattle. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. And this is a game where the defenses, they need to be on their toes because you've got quarterbacks here, yes, that can throw the football, but they can also run it very well, too. Mobile quarterbacks. Remember for the longest time, they used to tell the quarterbacks, stay in the pocket. We don't want you outside of it at all. Nowadays, that mobility, truly an asset, and people are game planning for it. As a scout told me recently, we are actually working with what the colleges are giving us nowadays. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from Seattle. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Ready to get our first look at Seattle's offense, led by that man, Russell Wilson. And his coach, Pete Carroll, says he's been playing the best he has ever played. Hard to argue with that. You think about the win over the Rams on Thursday night last week, 17-23, 268 yards, four touchdown passes, and his completion percentage through five games, 73.1%, second best in the NFL. Also, 12 touchdowns on the year, no interceptions. And throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. It's a gain of 15, first down Seahawks. Speaking of Disley, not sure that the Seahawks really knew what they had in this guy in his second year year now out of the University of Washington. If you remember back to his rookie season, a knee injury really cost him most of that year, but he has come back to be a huge part of the Seahawks offense, catching four touchdown passes in Seattle's first five games. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's the second-year man from San Diego State, Rashad Penny. And he'll get it down here to the 43. That one, a first down pickup of eight. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. This is Chris Carson, 1,000-yard rusher a year ago. Patrick Onwasor up to make the tackle. And one of the big bodies helping out this offense is your boy, Upati. And all he wants to do is have running plays call, fire out, and smack people. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Let's go, D. Big series right here. We got to step it up. They run the counter. It's Carson trying to run inside, but nothing there. Matt Judon there to bring him down. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. Let's go to the middle of the Baltimore defense where Brandon Williams holds court. And we often talk about how difficult it is to stop a big time runner. How about trying to stop a big time guy in the middle who wreaks havoc both with pass rush and against the run. Brandon Williams went to his first Pro Bowl at the end of the 2018 season. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. From the shotgun, Wilson. 
He may try and run for this. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 31-yard line. You and I both know most coaches are really fearful about their quarterbacks running with the ball. They don't want him to take that big hit. I don't think they worry about that with Russell Wilson. He's so smart in what he does, and we just saw it there on that scramble. scrimmage the 31 now on first and 10. It's caught, lock it. That throw good for four. It's second down. Now that catch certainly easier than the one Tyler Lockett made in the back left corner of the end zone in the Thursday night win over the Rams in week five. My goodness, that was incredible. In fact, the advanced metrics called it the most improbable catch in the NFL in the last two years. And if for some reason you missed it, look it up. Pretty impressive. Second down, it's Carson. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Chris Carson, 27 yards. And the Seahawks take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. A nice run by him, don't get me wrong, but the blocking up front was a thing of beauty. I think for an opening drive, how about that for an exclamation point? Just what you said, good blocking, good vision, and he accelerated to the end zone. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And it was all capped off by the Chris Carson touchdown run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken about the 12. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Lamar Jackson jogs on the field along with the rest of the Baltimore offense. Coming off a week five win at Pittsburgh, 26-23 to get the Ravens to three and two. Jackson in that game, 70 yards scrambling, running the football, but he did throw three interceptions and was sacked five times. But bottom line, it was enough for Lamar Jackson to get the victory in his first start at Heinz Field. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They go to the former Saint, Mark Ingram. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Baltimore was the most run-heavy team in the league last year after Lamar Jackson took over as a starter. And you think about Mark Ingram. He goes from a situation where he was sharing time with Kamara in New Orleans. Now he figures to be the top guy in the Baltimore backfield. Although I guess you could say he's kind of splitting time with his quarterback, Lamar Jackson. But a great veteran presence Mark Ingram is behind Jackson. Ingram now in his ninth NFL season. Ingram again, a first down carry. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And a very good offensive unit here. One of the reasons they're so good is running back Mark Ingram. Took a little while for him to find his footing when he got into the league, but the former Heisman Trophy winner has it now and has really upped his pass receiving potential. A nice player. Here we go. 
They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson over the middle, and it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there, and it's third down. And a look at Seattle's defense. Now one of the leaders in the Seattle secondary is safety Bradley McDougal. Since the retirement of Cam Chancellor, he's really had to step up and take on a primary role. Excellent against the run, solid in coverage, two interceptions in week one of 2018, and never looked back. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun, it's Jackson. He gets it to Brown, good play. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's gonna be made at the Seahawks 28. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. All start, offense. So that'll back them up five. After the penalty, it's Ingram. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. After 1-7-0 on EA Sports. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two as they are looking at a second and five situation. Second and five now. Jackson, Sneed's got it. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Well, they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in, with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this and, hey, you know, how are you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to want it. I didn't offer it. mine. You, know, you, were, you were the <laughs> smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. They'll run here with Ingram. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. This stadium once registered as the loudest roar ever recorded and you can hear them now, third and goal. From the gun, Jackson, and that's going to be knocked away in the end zone. It's incomplete. Give credit to K.J. Wright. He was disrupting defensively. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Tucker's kick right there, it's good. And they are on the board, but still trailing, it's seven to three. Tucker named the league's all-pro kicker for the third time in 2018. Go ahead and admit it. The only time that you get excited about Justin Tucker kicking is when he actually misses. It's and excited is not the right word. Surprise is more what we're talking about. 90.1% coming into 2019. He's incredible. Go, 
Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Seattle's offense taking the field again here, and this is a team that just keeps finding ways to win. They picked up their third straight victory on that Thursday night in Week 5 against the Rams. That was really a game that could have gone either way. You remember Greg Zerline missed a 44-yard field goal, and Seattle held on for the one-point victory. But you look at the next three weeks, all against teams from the Eastern Time Zone and two of them on the road. They'll go to the Browns. Pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Here's Carson, and they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Third and long, it's Wilson. Open man is Metcalf, he's got it. And they finally get him, but not before he reaches the 33-yard line. It's a big play there for Seattle, and even 40 yards. Well, far, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They run the counter. Carson, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. A good response by the defense, sending them backwards after that huge gain last play. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. 57, come on. Bend it. Bend it. Good. 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 On second down now, it's Carson. And a decent gain there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando or Jonathan Coachman with our highlights and analysis of this first half of action. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds, so a big call there. That brings up fourth. By the way, i got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over in your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. Let's go. Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I'd feel very confident about this kick, but let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. Baltimore's offense retaking the field here for this next drive. You know, earlier we mentioned their week five victory over Pittsburgh, 26-23, thanks to Justin Tucker. He hit the 46-yarder to force overtime, and then the game-winning 48-yarder that just hugged inside that left upright to get Baltimore to three and Looking for Snead, and it's intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick, and they'll 
They'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. And Brandon, the passing game for both of these teams is going to be effective as the game goes along. It's not looking like the rain's going to let up anytime soon. So that might mean a few more wobbly passes and wide receiver slips. And this one winds up getting intercepted. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. But what do you think? You get the ball off the turnover near the middle of the field. You take a shot here on the first play? You know I'm big on that. I love when I have great field position after a turnover. I feel like I might have a little bit off balance. I prefer to take a shot, but a lot of coaches will tell you you only do it if you trust the guy who's got the football in his hands. Meaning, if it's not there, he won't force it downfield and maybe turn into an interception. He'll go to the check down, go to a second option, and go ahead and take the play that's in front of him. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. So first and 10 now from the 30. From the gun, it's Wilson. And he slides to avoid the hit. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by the former Seahawk, Earl Thomas. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or I guess don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. Jackson on first down. This will be caught by Brown. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Four receivers to keep tabs on here. Three of them to the right side on second and five. Now Jackson. It's complete to Sneed. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. Every defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop, though, isn't it? And when you think of an explosive play, most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They went zooming past that number there. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Jackson from the shotgun. 
Robert's got it. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Jackson will throw again. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Seth Roberts as the first half is winding down and the Ravens have taken the lead. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown Marty there. Marty looking forward. Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. Five plays there on that drive, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. now to kick it away following the touchdown it's a short kick taking it to 15 and they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30 coming to the line here to begin their next drive the Seahawks offense likely time for just one final play and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit yeah and I think a lot of people look at it and go well maybe you take a shot here maybe you get some momentum going into the half What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one, go to the locker room, start over. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Final play of the half, it's Wilson. And now he'll tuck it and run. And avoids the contact by sliding. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports halftime report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams as they've already made their way back out of the locker room. So to bring you the story of the second half, let's get you right back out to Brandon God. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. This one taken just inside the 10. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Up come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. 
They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Jackson operating from the gun. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. How about the defensive effort from both of these teams that we've seen in this game? Would you say it's like a high-stakes chess match right now? Uh, chess is one way to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like it. Okay, the only reason I say that, you feel like they're contemplating their moves before actually making one, and none of them being done very confidently. Truth be told, I've never played chess, and I know that I'm not smart enough to play chess. Guys like you with your IQ, you can pull that off. Here we and go. able Here to we get go. this one across Here the 45 go. before he's brought down. 12 yards there and a first down. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What, is it three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. First and 10, it's Jackson. It's caught by Roberts. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. No gain there on the completion. Second and 10. And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10, right at the 40. Here's Ingram. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. A tenth carry here for Mark Ingram. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 11 yards there, first down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Edwards now on first and ten. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. And now Jackson will look to throw it. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a first down on a gain of 10. 
That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. They'll look to run with Ingram. And he will force his way into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run as the Ravens push further out in front. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. Tucker now to add the point after. It's good to make it 17-7. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And it's Mark Ingram who caps it off with a touchdown run. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. They'll roll him out right. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Here's Wilson from the gun. He'll throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Again on second and 10, it's Wilson. And his throw here is incomplete. David Moore, the intended target, and it's third down. His struggles finding open receivers continue. I don't know the last time I saw him this inconsistent throwing the football. It would be hard to find a date when he was this inconsistent. You know, in his locker, he keeps the word poise printed on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. He needs to find that poise right now. He certainly does. In fact, I would suggest he laminate it. He can run for it, and he will. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 29-yard line. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around.
down, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Hey, what? Lady. On first and ten, it's Wilson. He'll buy some time right. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. Green 80! Throwing again on second down. Wilson toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. And now it's third down. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. And he's got his target. That's more. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They run it with Carson, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Here's Wilson. Now he'll escape to his right. Touchdown, Seahawks! Defensively by now, you know his ability. You know he has it in him to take off and run. Yeah, because they knew coming into this game, but we've already seen examples in this contest that he can run the football. I think they're going to examine different ways to rush him now. Is it, are they going to do it with different lanes? Are they going to use a spy? But they have to come up with options because right now, He's hurting them. Now Myers for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was Russell Wilson finishing things off with a touchdown run. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. A little less than four minutes remaining, and the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. Remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them eat up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. 
Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it, and let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Operating from the gun, Jackson. This one complete to Ingram. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. Jackson now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Here's Jackson. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Bradley McDougal that time able to knock it away. Trying to get their tight end involved finally. That's the first time that they've looked his way. He's kind of been a forgotten man in this offensive scheme. Yeah, it didn't look his way at all in the first half. And I'll bet you the offense coordinator made a note at the half and said, let's get him involved because he could be a big-time playmaker for us. On second down, Ingram. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he'll get this up near midfield, but that's still a few yards shy of the first down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Here's Sam Cook now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. So Wilson and the Seahawks down 17-14, a little under a minute 50 remaining. They need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. He's back to throw. This complete to Lockett. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Clock running here under 90 seconds to go. Back to throw. And he's got the hook up to Moore. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Back to throw. Rolling to his right. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. Oh. 
So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right. A lost opportunity. He'll look to throw, and he finds Penny. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Second down, it's Carson. And once again, they stop him behind the line. Great job by this Ravens defense. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And they're going to face a third down. Wilson trying to urge his guys to go faster and get set at the line. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to potentially send us to overtime. And this kick is not going to get there. Go. It's short and no good. Well, that would have been something if he could have saved him from that long distance there in the closing seconds, but it was just not meant to be. They need a little more time and a little more yardage to give them a realistic shot. And that kick's a good metaphor for this game, isn't it? They're going to wind up a little short in the end. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And say what you want about CenturyLink Field up in Seattle, but for my money, this is the loudest and most difficult place to win in the league. It's very hard. The fan support off the charts. The way that they make noise and understand when to make noise, they understand the game as well as anyone. And how about what we get in our, our media packets when we start preparing for the game? They have it in their own stuff, right? The number of offsides penalties, false start penalties that they draw against the opposing team because of that fan support. And last but not least, they designed the stadium to keep the noise in, and it works. But not in this one. They were able to somehow come in here and get that victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From